<laughs> yeah, Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Things Are Getting Sketchy. Uh, this is the Halloween horror episode, and par for the course, things are getting sketchy. You saw that amazing opening intro there. We got to do a little bit of revision at it. Casey and uh, Nathan are not here this evening. Both are unfortunately not able to make it, but we called in some Cracker Jack spot fillers. We have Brandon McIntosh making a return. I know he was this on recently as well. Hello, hello. And we also have Danny Harrell popping on. It's first time I'm working with him, although I, I've spoken to him a lot on uh, Messenger. Glad to get you guys in here. Yeah. Um, we also have Thomas Day. Tom's mm -hmm. going to be doing his uh, digital sculpting. And um, uh, we got Paul. I forgot. Paul, I won't say your last name because I murdered it enough times already last time. <laughs> <laughs> but we got Paul in here as well. Um, it's thematic. Yes, it, that's, that's true. Um, and also, you guys might notice a little bit on the screen there at the bottom, we got a new little logo. Uh, tonight's episode is going to be sponsored uh for the kickstarter book that uh again a lot of these artists are on sketcher uh things are getting sketchy take part in we got the frankenstein vision sketchbook which is the uh kind of like the sponsor tonight so we'll be talking a little bit more of that as well too only a couple days left for that um uh, check it out no i know uh stefan said he's going to be throwing up a link in the comments so everybody can you know, pop into it and take a peek uh great project i know i myself was a big fan of the uh dracula visions that came out there a couple of years ago so i'm looking forward to this as well but enough of me talking let's jump into the artists uh first we'll start off with uh one of our later editions tonight we got brandon mcintosh give us some details about yourself brandon and what you're going to be drawing tonight oh, okay i appreciate it, nathan um yeah uh, i'm going to be uh I'm going to be doing uh, something similar that I did last week for the Enter the Green uh, edition. I'm going to be doing another die cut, and I'm going to be doing one this time on a House of Slaughter blank number one, and it's going to be a die cut of the cabinet of Dr. Caligar. It's going to be one of the poster um, posters that I've seen that would work very well as a silhouetted piece. So once I start incorporating that, I'm going to mix it around a little bit. Um, and uh, it's going to be done around this because it's the last minute. I usually have a stencil ready to go so mm -hmm. I can start cutting on camera. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not so sure I'm going to be able to do that tonight, but we'll see. We'll see. That, see that, how it goes. that is pretty awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I have a, I have a few copies of that House of Slaughter blank as well. And I'm saving it because I want to give it to someone and I want them to do Sergeant Slaughter on there. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So maybe I'll, maybe I'll send out a, a jam cool. piece for you guys and you can all do uh, Sergeant Slaughter's on there like a multiverse or something. That's so. hilarious. <laughs> cool. Nobody take that idea. All right. Our second artist this evening was actually our first artist to pop up. We got Thomas Day. Thomas, why don't you give us your details and um, what you're working on tonight? Hi. Well, I digitally sculpted, you can see right here. Mm -hmm. And um, tonight, what I'm going to be working on is a, a vampire kind of going between his human form and bat form. So he should be pretty creepy. I get Kind of Nosferatu-ish, kind of skinny, lanky, and creepy. More Nosferatu, less Nicolas Cage? Exactly. <laughs> a vampire kind of... <laughs> Sorry, that's me, boys. I tried to post it to uh, my Nat Daddy page there. So that's pretty cool. And you guys will have to excuse Thomas a little bit if his voice is um, uh, yeah, scratchy. He's just getting over being sick. Uh, let's check most of us are nowadays. Everybody's sick. So Seriously. Yeah. All right, our next artist this evening is, I was kind of mentioning him a little bit earlier, we got Danny Harrell. Danny, tell us the details about yourself and what you're working on. Um, I uh, guess, let's see. Uh, I'm five foot 11 with 185 pounds-ish. Um, nice. Okay, this is things are getting sketchy, but not the things are getting sketchy uh, in the later night special. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, 
what's your what's your uh, <laughs> yeah, they, zodiac uh, sign? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, March, whatever. Okay, March, social is. Too? March is my zodiac. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and again, it's it, it's the horror special, not the horror special. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It was like the horror horoscope specials. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, Stefan got up with me about 15 minutes ago and asked if I wanted to jump in tonight. So I uh, grabbed one of the things that are getting sketchy blanks and uh, I'm going with uh, Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors. Nice. Um, not really horror as much, I guess, but. Uh, the title i was gonna say it's right in the title there so i think that's covered now my question to you is which do you prefer the old black and white jack nicholson one or the 80s one with uh steve uh, martin and stuff like that uh steve martin and uh rick moranis is the one that uh I yeah kind of came up on watching as a mm -hmm. kid so yeah i i like that one um i mean i do like the old one as well but uh I like the the musical Rick Moran. Yeah, I, I'm uh, roughly the same age as you, I think, and I came up with that one too. But um, for whatever reason, at my house, my dad had a, a copy of VHS of the old black and white one, which we watched pretty often. And I got no special fondness for that one too. But um, yeah, the musical one's yeah. definitely pretty cool for sure. I didn't. I've never even heard of that other one. Oh, it's old black it's and so, white. Yeah, really? it's like one of Jack Nicholson's I'm so first ignorant movies. right now. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah, really okay. Old. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And our final um, artist this evening, we got Paul. Paul, why don't you give us some details where they can find you and what you're working on? And I know uh, on your screen, I don't know if you can see it or not, but we got your cover for the Kickstarter project on there. So you could uh, maybe talk about that a little bit too. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, where to start? Uh, okay, well, what I'm working on right now is um, uh, a blend between the alien or xenomorph and the alien from the thing. So um, it's kind of like I don't know you 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 uh, the the xenomorph is really complicated to draw, so you can kind of have the opportunity to cheat by putting the thing in there. Yeah. <laughs> and mix and matching whatever you like and it's like i don't know what this part looks like but i do know how to draw a dog's head so i'll put a dog's head there for some reason <laughs> but um i did something like this uh previously for um martin duncan's schedule mania yeah. um and i had so much fun drawing it so I'll, I'll, i'm doing another version of it where um he's kind of breaking out of the ice because in the movie you never actually see what that looks like right um so i'm like yeah maybe uh maybe that's what it is who knows anyway speaking of martin yeah martin's um upcoming book his second visions book is uh frankenstein visions his first one if i can find my copy is dracula visions and yeah. so yeah so that's that one um and yeah he has the kickstarter going on for frankenstein and then yeah in the corner there it's, that's my painting of uh, frankenstein um and we each got a quote there's like i don't know 30 something of us it just keeps on i feel like the list of artists just keeps growing oh i have um, official information on that because i pulled it up beforehand there's 72 oh, yeah. pages and i believe it's 35 artists oh wow <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a it's like a couple more than the Dracula Visions one, yeah. but um, yeah, his Kickstarter wow. is <laughs> is is up, um, and yeah, I'm just, um, happy to be invited back for this second one. So that's awesome. Um, uh, yeah, he has all sorts of uh, rewards, different covers, including that one. I was surprised when. He said, told me that mine was going to be a cover. <laughs> yeah, yours is cover <laughs> yeah. C. Cover uh, C. Yeah, yeah, cover C. And it was on, the, on like the packaging on some like coffee that he has. This, uh, yeah. That he was selling for, I think, one of you, uh, the uh, Kickstarter rewards. Is that right? Um, yeah. Anyway. The tiers. Um, yeah, yeah, one of the tiers. 
Um, so, yeah. And that, that lovely uh, picture made it into the, uh, the intro this evening. Yeah, yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people uh, have mixed feelings about it. It's like, uh, I love it, but it's gross. <laughs> That's Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, like, like he's, he's like slimy. <laughs> Like he just came out from aldehyde. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, um, Amanda Daly also is doing a a sculpt of it. There, she she uh, she did a sculpt on probably ZBrush, and then um, Martin is gonna print it, three D print it, and then paint it. So that's another tier um, that people can get. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. There, I don't know. Check out the Slam Press Tomes Instagram. He's posted like a lot of the art there for people to see. Um, yeah, and I don't know who else. Richard Pace is on. Is, I think he had his cover up there for a bit. Ken Lashley's doing them. I think the hardcover. Uh, I think, I think Adam Gordon's doing the cover. I don't know one of the covers. Uh, but yeah. Um, visions also and uh yes yeah, it's doing frankenstein too um and uh speaking <laughs> speaking of becca i know she was in um niagara falls not niagara falls uh new york comic-con and then i heard some, heard that somebody was sick here like on the show yeah um casey and then sick. it reminded me about yeah casey is sick and reminded me how like a lot of people went to New York Comic Con and came back with COVID. And I'm like, oh, okay, so if somebody has COVID, you know they're one of the cool people <laughs> that went to New York, New York Comic Con. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right, and I do see uh, a fifth person here. I'm just trying to see if I can add them on as well. All right. Just bear with me, everybody. How much everybody got going on for Halloween this weekend? Because it is Halloween weekend, even though Halloween is on Tuesday. Uh, I don't have I don't have uh, any children, um, but I uh, just bought candy for the building. I think they do that every year. So okay, um, yeah. Uh, see. Yeah, we're doing trunk or treat. You said, and oh, go ahead. Sorry, you said something about trunk or treat. What's that? Yeah, it's just uh, like there's a couple of colleges around here, and they'll do it where it's basically just trick or treating, but it's in a parking lot with a bunch of like the teachers and stuff will have uh, like their cars set up or something, or they'll set up like little booths and they dress up and hand out candy. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's not, uh, it's not the same experience, but on uh, Tuesday we'll go around the neighborhood and do trick or treating. And that's, uh, that's always a lot more fun. Yeah. True. True that. And I've got a, uh, got an evil Knievel costume that I'm wearing this year that I did, uh, a thing for work. We, uh, did a, a charity event, a dragon boat race. And I dressed up as evil Knievel for that. And I'm just going to use that for a <laughs> Halloween costume as well. So 
<laughs> you have to go really fast in a dragon boat to go up that ramp. <laughs> yeah. Does that costume like a full body uh, cast? It is. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. It's a full full body jumpsuit, like the the white and then the red, white, and blue stripes and stars all over it. And uh, that was my last year. Whenever they asked me if I would be the drummer for one of the one of our dragon boats. Uh, I was like, yeah, if you'll buy me a hot dog costume, and they did. And uh, yeah, right. so this year, I was like, yeah, I'll do it if you'll buy me a, a evil Knievel jumpsuit, and and they did. So <laughs> that's awesome. I also got the uh, evil Knievel uh, <laughs> motocross actual motocross gloves. That the coolest thing about it is that the evil Knievel signature is on the middle finger. So when you flip people <laughs> off, it says evil Knievel. Uh, perfect. Just perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that toy motorcycle that had the base that you rev it up and then just release it and his yeah. motorcycle, that was like my favorite thing when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I always wanted one of those and I never had one and then uh Whenever the last Toy Story movie came out, there was like a, a knockoff of that toy. And oh, right. Uh, it was like like the Canadian uh, Evil Knievel. Yeah. And we bought one. We bought one of those uh, for my my eight year old, and that's like the coolest thing. It actually <laughs> it it actually works a little bit better than a lot of the Evil Knievel ones that I've seen. It uh, we've set up like little ramps and stuff, and had it jump in Hot Wheels. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I never saw one of those in person ever. I, I remember seeing them in comics all the time. But again, evil I know Evil Knievel was big, but that's more of an American thing. Canadians I don't we didn't have that as much. Like well we did, but I mean I just I never saw one as a kid, I remember. So I remember. Yeah, Canadians yeah. don't like jumping fourteen buses. That's not a, a Canadian thing. Well, I remember definitely watching the specials on that, but I'm talking about that toy. No. <laughs> yeah, here's what the Americans it gets with all the the red, white, and blue yeah. all over them. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, there's actually a really good documentary called Being Evil about him that uh, I think it's on like Roku Channel and a bunch of other free streaming services because it came out several years ago. But it's uh, it's actually really good. What did he like? How did I assume he's not alive anymore? Who's that? Uh, his no. Evil Knievel. No, no, I'm not and, sure. Yeah, his son is. Yeah, I, was getting, I know his son. I think has does it now, but I think he's even pretty old now yeah, too. Uh, he passed. <laughs> and he didn't. He... Yeah, he. Uh, his son's getting pretty old. I think Evil Knievel died at like 70. The crazy, craziest part about that oh. is he died at 70 of like natural causes, not from like yeah, not, not shot from out of the cannon yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was getting at. Like, <laughs> good for him. Yeah, I think he died of like kidney failure or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, not, not anything like, you know, crashing over buses or jumping fountains no. or setting himself on fire or any of that it's amazing to see any of those videos where he gets completely wrecked he just looks like a rag doll flopping oh, around it's ridiculous yeah like, it, i don't know how yeah in that documentary he talks about like 30s like he talks about how like all the bones and stuff that he's broken it is well, it's ridiculous do you guys remember super dave osborne it's yes. like, yeah, like, yeah, that the Super Dave Osborne yeah. is like the, <laughs> the what the, the extreme version of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> was Evil Knievel like? I picture him being a senior citizen in a wheelchair. Was he like wheelchair bound? It had rockets, though. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't remember ever being in a wheelchair. He. Uh, <laughs> No, he like walked around with a cane, but wow. Yeah, he uh, also with he the rocket just walked around with a cane. But he was walking around with a cane whenever he was in his like 
in his thirties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see that Richard Mall passed them? The, uh... Oh, yeah, bull from Night Court. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, he was Two Face uh, in the yep. Batman the Animated Series, too, right? Yep. Yeah. It's crazy. We're losing the whole Night Court cast. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We're getting old. Well, everyone is getting old. Me included. <laughs> have you guys been? Do you guys have like uh, any kind of Halloween traditions around your place? I always watch uh, tons of uh, Halloween movies and just scary shows and stuff. Last night was Ghostbusters. That's not very Halloween-y. Sure that's like is. that's like the night before. <laughs> no, yeah, I try to watch. Always watch too, Ernest Scared Stupid. Time. That's a, that's a very popular one, actually. Ernest Scared Stupid. I never thought it would be. What were you saying, Paul? What's your favorite horror movie to watch? Oh, I don't know. what is my favorite horror movie to watch? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, it, it's hard. It's hard to say because I don't, I, I don't get scared of them as often. Um, but. I don't know, one it's a it's a cool story um and then obviously there's the effects and everything like that um so i don't know if that really qualifies as like a favorite horror movie anymore but yeah for sure. that would be my answer um it's uh it's part of the uh the peacock network's halloween uh thing so you know, oh, yeah. it's officially halloween man <laughs> I saw this morning a headline that said that Peacock, the that app or network, you want to call it now, lost six billion dollars. That was that's what they lost what? last year, six billion dollars. But hey, let's, wow. let's keep really let's keep having those those streaming services. No, let's throw up fifty more. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them are losing money. Oh, huge! From what I hear. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's like all of these, you have all the streaming services and everybody's like, oh, I wish that wish that there was a way that we could put all of this into one thing. Like maybe connect it with like a cable and everything <laughs> be just right there together. Like some kind of, I don't know, maybe have it come through like a satellite dish. Or, Jeez, that's just crazy <laughs> enough to work. <laughs> It's like when you can't find your phone, it's like, man, I wish that somebody would attach a cord to this. <laughs> Maybe hook it to See, the we wall had it, or something. We had all that shit okay. figured out in the 80s, so. and it got forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> or those, like, strings that you put on, like, wireless earbuds. Now, like... <laughs> or your mittens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the mittens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i've watched uh, like said ghostbusters i've watched uh, a lot of crappy old movies like uh i watched this one yesterday called body bags it's like a anthology it has some stupid stories in it another one called i think it's called bedtime bedtime stories or dead time stories or like this Uncle's babysitting yeah, his dead time. yeah his uncle's babysitting his nephew. He's telling like these horrible stories. <laughs> <laughs> there are some horrible horror movies on Prime, like I don't know, like Tubi really, is good for that too. Tubi's got a really billion of low budget. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, 
had really horrible low about horror movies or like bad horror movies i have to bring up i Fear saw that one on there. outer space <laughs> if you haven't watched it, yeah if that, you haven't watched that it's, oh, that's uh, on my list it's uh i don't know why janine garofalo is in the movie but she is and if you watch the trailer it's it makes no sense at all there's like <laughs> the people the werewolves look like they're just wearing halloween mask and uh like they don't even really try, and then for some reason there's like some people having sex in the trailer, and they're just like the guys throwing pizza toppings on the girl, and she's like, "Yeah, give me that pepperoni, but more cheese." And I don't know, it doesn't make any sense, but it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, definitely worth watching. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's gonna start a new it's fetish. Unlike, I mean, it's kind of like the movie Laser Blast. I love that. Movie. What? You've ever watched the movie Laser Blast? Laser Blast like, with the the turtle alien looking things. Yeah, with like the whenever it points, it's got like the floppy finger. It's, it's like yeah. rubbery. That is a great movie. Hot yeah, damn, yeah. everybody! I got it to work. Nice. You Nathan, yeah, I, I, I managed to get it set up so I can have all four plus artists. Now I got five artists on tonight now. You guys, I just blew your mind, didn't I? Totally. Nathan, can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I will <laughs> tell him he's on the screen. But I will, yes, we got extra artists here, people, all tonight. Uh, Nathan has uh, showed up. It took me a few minutes to get him in because I've never done that before. But hey, I will bring him up for you guys to see. That is Nathan's stuff there. Even though it does have Paul, <laughs> it does have Paul's uh, uh, face thing on it right now. All right, I'm still working on it. Cool. All right, I will go back to this here. I will go to this so we can see a little bit of everything there. Um, I know we started talking about it just before the show started, but Danny, why don't you tell us what's exciting going on in your life? Because I know you got a couple projects out right now. Yeah, um, this week, the second issue of Rebel Girls came out. And uh, I read it. It's awesome. Then Jungle Drama, a, a comic that I just did the color. I, I still need to read it, uh, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't read it since the, the final version, I guess. Uh, I just haven't had time. I haven't read read through Rebel Girls. Can you hear me now? The second one yet yeah, I can hear you. Uh, since I've gotten the comics. So... Uh, but uh, yeah, both of those came out this week and uh, pre-orders for the third issue of Rebel Girls are, they're open on Diamond's website that the third issue will be out in January. And uh, the first story arc is gonna be uh, a total of four issues. So we're getting close to uh, getting that knocked out and hopefully can get it in a trade paperback sometime early next year yep and i saw too that I'm you were sure saying we're do another issue of uh oh. I, I was gonna say i saw that uh the trade paperback isn't guaranteed unless you have so many copies sold of the singles correct well the the singles uh the sales from those that uh that's how I pay the Robert on the interior. So if, uh, if there's not enough sales from that, then, uh, it will be difficult for me to get through the, to the fourth issue. Issue three is, uh, I already have all of that, all of the interior art is finished. I'm just finishing up with the colors and then I'm going to do the lettering, but, uh, issue four kind of will be determined by, you know, or when I get to release it will be determined by the sales of the uh, issue two and three. Uh, but 
you know, it's always kind of a, a gamble because you don't really know how much you're going to make off of them, how much the sales are going to be. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I didn't really, didn't really get into it to, you know, make money. Uh, but it would be nice to not lose a ton of money. Yeah, but, sure. Uh, I'm going to get through the, uh, I'm going to get through the first four issues definitely because I just want to finish the story out. But, um, yeah, the trade paperback, uh, King, King Spot hadn't really done trades in a little bit, but, uh, they're starting back early next year. So it'll be the perfect time to get that out into the world and have a collected edition of, uh, of Rebel Girls. And I, there's a uh, there's a secondary uh, backup story that's a one shot for uh, that kind of fills in the gaps with uh, one of the characters in Rebel Girls that I'm hoping to get to do soon, and that's going to be a project that Becca and I are working on. She's going to do the the uh, sequentials for it whenever she finishes up with uh, the Wormhole Club oh, tragedy. Oh, oh. So that's. That's uh that's the plan right now. Cool. Uh, but there's no real time frame on it. Uh, it's just a story that I wrote that uh, I wanted to do, and it'll probably it'll probably happen after I get through the first four issues of uh, Rebel Girls. And there's a couple other projects that I'm working on that uh, I wish that I could talk about. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about, hmm. but uh, can't right now. But we do have uh, Robert and I the interior artist for rebel girls we did a uh, a cover for the josie and the pussycat 60th anniversary and uh then next week we've got another one to announce another archie cover for the uh sabrina the teenage witch holiday special so we'll have those that artwork uh, i think on halloween is whenever we're gonna share the artwork for the sabrina title but that one doesn't come out to december and and they can find that at your uh, your Etsy store, right? Yeah, yeah, that's where we're doing pre-orders. And then uh, there's a few shops that have. It. Uh, so what's Rebel Girls Nathan's about? Got other shops, ECGC. Yeah, I was segueing to that. <laughs> that was my segue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Sorry>. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nat Daddy Collectibles will have yeah. copies of uh, of both of those. About, uh... Go ahead. Rebel Girls yeah. is pretty awesome. Rebel Describe Girls it. Is about, uh... Yeah, it's about three uh, three girls who uh, they're in a, uh, a punk rock band. Not necessarily a great punk rock band. Just a teenage bunch of teenagers that uh, are learning to play their instruments and uh, they they all have uh, the ability to uh, conjure ghosts through their music and that's mm. by design because the uh, because Satan has uh, given them this ability but uh, it's part of the end of the world plans uh, but anyway, the story centers around the three girls playing in uh, dive bars and at bonfires and things like that. And uh, the devil has sent a, uh, a ghoul to make sure that they resurrect and conjure enough of the ghosts to overthrow the living. And she sends a... Uh, sends a, a demon in the form of a CD record executive that they don't want anything to do with who's just trying to find a way to sign them. And uh, But they're a punk rock band and DIY and want nothing to do with any kind of a, what they would consider a mainstream, uh, mainstream record label that could get them recognition to the masses. But it's, uh, so they kind of make their own way without having a uh, record executive or anything pushing them. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, there's the second issue kind of hints that the big bad for the, the story, which is another ghoul, 
but uh, the uh, the villain that's introduced, Scootin' Boogeyman. So if that tells you anything about uh, the seriousness <laughs> of the story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it, it's so a very, it's very you know, mature. It's not for kids. Yeah, it's definitely not for kids. I, I always describe it to people as Josie and the Pussycats with F-bombs. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's kind of what it is. Uh, lots of foul language, but uh, but it's not like, you know, it's got girls in the title, but it's not like most of your modern comics. It's not a porn comic. It doesn't have anything in there. It's not like, you know, a lot of the the comics that seem to be coming out, I guess, with in covers that I've seen recently, that it's like people are just buying comics just for the titty covers. Sure. We don't really have that, but uh, we do have goofiness, and uh, it's uh, it's just a fun, it's just a comedy kind of horror story. Uh, but essentially, it's a group of girls trying to get out a message their message that of their music and uh not wanting anything to do with uh the demon record executive and yeah so you're the uh writer and the colorist it'll uh it'll probably turn colorist and then starting on issue <laughs> two also i'm doing the lettering so yeah and and then your your other project that which is a little bit more um titty oriented <laughs> the <laughs> jungle drama that i i super enjoyed that this week it was exactly what i would thought it was going to be um tell us about that one yeah that was one that uh troy dongera who uh he's the series artist on a, a comic called kid slap shot he uh he wanted to do he wanted to try his hand at at writing a comic so uh he uh he wrote the the script for jungle drama and then had um eric marshall who is the interior artist he did uh, uh all the art and i colored it to the like point and uh but also it has kind of a uh, Archie, like Betty and Veronica type feel of two girls in the jungle competing over like the dumbest guy on the planet. <laughs> it, it's awesome. I loved it. Um, it's it, exactly just like you said, the, um... yeah, it's just a kind of, I myself found it like like you said the one your rebel girls is like Josie and the Pussycats, you know with with f bombs. But I found the, the jungle drama like I said just like that Betty Veronica Archie triangle with uh, you know a whole lot of sexual innuendo in there and that I thought it was awesome. The art suited it perfectly. Which, uh, yeah, yeah, and I think that he was going for more of a. Uh, I don't know more of an all ages book but our uh art just kind of pushed it in a different direction <laughs> but uh, whenever he wrote it and pitched it to us it was more of an all ages thing and then it just didn't yeah we we kind of went a different direction with the art but uh yeah So th this book is available now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jungle drama just came out. Actually, yeah, both, both of those just came out this week. Available now. Yeah. yeah. Issue two of Rebel Girls uh, came out this week, and Jungle Drama one yeah, came out this week. Uh, and yeah, and Rebel Girls was supposed to be out last week, but there was an issue with the printer. So. Mm -hmm as it goes if you uh if you watch this week's episode of the nat daddy weekly roundup yeah. on my channel there i review both of them they're on there oh cool wait your channel yeah, is a what, youtube night. channel i have it on youtube and on facebook here <clears throat> 
Not daddy collectibles. <laughs> and I could, uh, I could probably describe both of the books a little bit better uh, if my brain just wasn't fried today from running all over the place. But uh, <laughs> yeah. We, you spent the whole day today promoting your book. You were at a comic store and that work and doing all that kind of stuff, were you not? Yeah, I was at a, uh, a comic shop in Decatur, Alabama. It's like an hour or so from here. But um, yeah, they they wanted to do a in-store thing to promote the book. And they were willing to order several copies of it. So I was I wanted to go down and hang out there for a little while. It's a, it's a cool little shop. Uh, it's a, it was a small shop, but uh, I, I was kind of surprised by the turnout for the signing. There was a lot of people there and uh, I sold a lot more books than I thought that I would, which was good. So, you know, and uh, one cool thing, grab it. Uh, he, uh, the guy that runs the shop heard me talking to one of the customers about how much I love Eric Powell's book, The Goon, and just Eric Powell's work in general. And so he goes to the back and he comes out and brings this that he gave to me. It is a signed and remarked The Goon Tiki oh, Mug that's set. Cool. Awesome. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> he brought it out and he was like, I haven't met many people who are huge fans of The Goon. And uh, he's like, I've had this for a couple of years. And it's like, I think you should. Uh, he's like, I think you should have it. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. cool. I read anybody. I, I, I just finished reading The Goon Omnibus this week and reviewing it as well for my channel. And I, yeah, I'm a huge fan of it now too. I loved it. That was a great artwork in that book. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so good. Uh, Eric Powell did the artwork and I think Dave Stewart did the colors for uh, most of the series, if not all. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool series. He It was on Dark Horse for a while and then he went back to his own publishing company um, and that's what he's releasing it as now. But um, yeah, it's it's been around for quite a while and uh, really cool series. There was actually talk of a uh, an animated movie at one point of it. And they actually have test footage where Paul Giamatti does the voice <laughs> of uh, Frankie. I can't remember who was doing the voice of the goon, but it was it looked awesome. But uh, it never made it any farther than just the the test footage, like a, a sixty second clip or so that they made, which is a bummer because it would have been a really cool oh, series or uh, movie. I, I would assume there would have been a lot of CGI, or unless they did it animation wise, because uh, it's all just monsters, really. Yeah, it was it was animation. It was almost like claymation type animation. It looked really awesome. You can find the footage oh. online. Uh, it's on YouTube and. It, but it, it's really cool. I wish they do more claymation uh, animation animated movies. I'm a 3D artist, and I yeah, or just I'd animated. Still rather see, uh, you know, the with it just looks so much better with the live action models that, that have moved around, like yeah. Ray, Ray Harryhausen used to do. Oh, like the the yeah. first uh, Clash of the Titans movie. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that was probably Ray's last thing that he did. Ray Harryhausen. Mm -hmm. I think it was actually yeah. I do believe you're right. I that movie I remember it so well as a kid because again being a kid. And being back in the early 80s there, you only had, like, very limited access to stuff. So that movie was, like, huge. It was on serial, and they had action figures and stuff for it. But it just God, never... I that movie so much. Yeah, it just never... It, it, I don't know. It just it kind of crashed, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah, I like that one. I actually didn't mind the remake either, but... Oh, I forgot they remade that. That's right. They 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 made two actually. It was like a yeah. remake and then a sequel. I 
I uh, I was kind of hoping somebody tonight would do uh, uh, General Mills monster mashup type thing. <laughs> the serial monsters. God damn it. That's, that's a missed opportunity right there. I actually uh, I sent out the uh, that kind of suggestion to Casey yesterday. But too bad she's the one that wasn't able to make it tonight. <laughs> I wouldn't mind making a, a Frankenberry figure. <laughs> Frank Frankenberry would be cool. You could put it in that monster, the uh, Frankenstein uh, visions book. but it is um i it says like monster mash and it has all three of them on there and i thought it was gonna be like three separate bags right like three separate right. all flavors and that because i saw you guys in the states have that but in canada it's just a mixture of all three. Oh, they actually mixed them together <laughs> yeah it's not it's not good it's definitely not good I was mentioning it to a few of the artists a little bit earlier, being in uh, Canada, right in the middle of the prairies, that we got hit with uh, winter yesterday. Uh, so, yeah, we got snow, and it's you know, minus 16 already here now with the windshield and that. What's everybody else going? What? Yeah, same thing, yeah. Yeah, Colorado's got it, yeah. That it's is 82 a degrees in Tucson right now. Wow. Not exactly sweater sweater weather. Definitely not. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You guys, I thought I had things all set up. I do not have it as good as I thought I did. Oh, well, we're making do. We're making do. <laughs> we're doing all right. That's right. We got Mike Ruth is in the chat saying, hey, fellas. Hey, Mike. Hope you're hey, doing Mike. well. And I don't know what I did to Paul's camera, but it's, it shows up on my feed, but not in the window here. Very strange. Everybody here has kids or I know a couple of you guys have kids for sure. They must be all getting pretty excited for the holidays. I call Halloween a holiday in case you're wondering. <laughs> I know with my son, uh, he's an adult now, but that was like the best time of the year for us. We'd make costumes because his birthday would always, uh, um, always here his birthday would be right afterwards in that so okay. all right everyone's audio is screwing up now too i have no idea what's going on here tonight all in a part man all in a part. all right i can hear you guys but i get some people we can hear thomas it says okay Danny, we can hear you, right? Can you talk there for a sec? Nope, not hearing Danny now either. It's not. 
No, this is very strange. I don't know. I have like I had to try and change some things there, so I probably screwed it up in that. So we'll see it goes. I have a feeling I'm. We'll just power through, and if I uh, can't hear Danny, nope, that's so strange. I don't know what's going on with Danny. I will try to reset Danny's thing. Hold on a sec again here, people. I know Danny was having some. Um, maybe some headphone issues there before his, his headphone, but I don't know if that's actually connected to the thing or not, but we will see here. All right. Yeah, his earbuds are issues. Yeah, his earbuds are dead. So that's why Danny can't hear us. Yeah. yeah. I kind of thought that was the issue because uh, he told me that beforehand. He wasn't supposed to come on tonight. So it, uh, thanks for that, Danny. That's all good. Winnipeg this week, unfortunately, I'm not able to go because uh, I'm working all weekend, and that is uh, Winnipeg Comic Con. So I know one of the uh, TAGS alumni is Hugh Rookwood's in town for that. So I was hoping to maybe see him, but I will probably not get a chance. Um, although my son said tomorrow he's going to head over there and Maybe say hi to him if you can. He looks like a lot of fun. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, we're good. I got it switched over to my uh, MacBook audio. Cool, that sounds good. Uh, Hugh is a nice guy to hang out. He's lots of energy, super fun, friendly. And he's a giant. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've seen that in the pictures. He's always like, Towering over everybody else. Yeah, he's a big dude. It's super nice. Yeah, Mike, I wish you were coming here too, Mike, but at the same time too, you missed out on, like I said, uh, the shitty weather that just kind of showed up that always seems to show up right in time for Halloween and for Comic Con. Brendan, how's your work going so far? I see you're starting to do some carving in that there. The live feed's off. It's not on. Like, he stopped streaming it? Oh, I wonder if... Hmm. Somebody didn't pay the bill. No, it's still going. I, I can see it on Facebook. Oh, I'm not sure why it's not on YouTube, but it's on Facebook here still. Yeah, and it can't hear Brandon now either. Hmm. It's back now? It, it's Okay, it's cool. Cool, I'll check and see if I can fix Brandon's thing, because apparently Brandon's, we can't hear Brandon now. So You guys are, I'm, I'm having lots of fun tonight. <laughs> Is that sarcasm? Uh, yes, that is sarcasm. We have that in Canada as well. Yeah, I thought I was feeling a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that I, what happens is I cannot do any of this. And then as soon as I try and start doing this stuff, it's like, makes it worse sometimes. So. Can you All hear right. me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Working. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Technology is a fickle mistress. Yeah, Brandon's got no audio, it seems like. Um, I'm not sure why Brandon has no audio. I just tried fixing it again, but I'm not too sure. But again, we got no audio. So who knows? We, we yeah, got some no audios. We got some no pictures. I have no idea. What are you going to do? <laughs> My microphone we... wasn't working for a bit, so I just, I don't know, got what? out and then got right back in. 
Yeah, I'm gonna. Catholic. I'm actually gonna try you know, doing your again because again with your your feed right now, Paul is like it was fine for all. <laughs> I think I think you're just doing all this on, on purpose. <laughs> no, well I do it on purpose, but it's not what's supposed you're to be like, happening. You're like a tech whiz. <laughs> it's all right, we. Oh, so, yeah. so now now my audio is out apparently now too. So I don't know what's going on here, guys. Uh, we can hear Paul, but no audio at all. So. I'm going to, oh, now we're all back now, it says. All the audio is back. So I'm, I'm guessing it's just a, <laughs> an OBS thing. So I have no clue. But I'm not going to swear, and I'm not going to sweat. Hoo -hoo. We're just going to keep going. An hour more. Yeah, power through. <laughs> power through. All right, everybody. I think it's just a, a computer and internet thing because the now the sound is all back. Um, and Paul's picture is back too. So I guess it was a OBS thing. I'm not sure. For all I know, maybe Stefan is uh, in the background on OBS trying to fix stuff for us. Maybe that's doing it. Who knows? Oh, now we just lost Brandon's picture, but I'm sure that is probably going to pop back up again. So this is a developing <laughs> situation. Yeah, it is. I'm just trying right. to figure out what OBS means. O o OBS is the uh, the system where we uh, broadcast everything off of. Oh. Yeah. Is it so working now? Uh, let me check here. You are good again, Brandon. Yeah. Awesome. You can hear me now? I can hear you now as well, too. Good Lord. I've been talking to myself for the last fucking 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I've been talking to myself no, for actually, 30 comment, years. I was talking. Actually, no. We we heard all your we heard all your comments. We were just ignoring you. So. <laughs> it's all good. Um, I now that I can hear you and you can answer. How is the cutting on the cover going? You know, now you're starting to slice it out with the exacto knife. Yes, you have to. Yeah, uh, you know, it's coming along very well. <laughs> That's cool. Good Lord. Okay, now, yeah, hold on, hold on, there we go. Yeah, so that's what, what, I've got what so made far. you? Uh, oh wow! What made you decide to do that, and and how did you go. decide I to do that? Like, have you done that in the past? Is that something you've experimented oh. on? Because like die cutting like that is a that's a pretty big challenge. You know, there's no there's no erasing. You know. Cool. That's exactly why I wanted to do it because uh, I, I find whenever I'm drawing, I draw usually with um i usually end up doing oh, just, yeah there we go okay that's better um i usually end up drawing specifically with pencil and then i'm usually so scared to go over with ink or any markers like i, I can't just take a pen and just jump right into it um like i've seen many uh, other artists uh, do i i haven't i haven't reached that level and i probably won't either at least at least not until i'm comfortable with it however i figured doing it this way i kind of get the best of best of both worlds here i can draw and take my time and then when i decide i want to i can go and slice into it and i figure even if it's a wrap around as long as i take my time with it and i'm not uh overly hasty when it comes to drawing with the knife or the scalpel here i mean mm -hmm. um it makes it uh it makes it more uh i don't know i i guess i'm kind of uh, like it's, it's some difference because uh, um like I, I like the idea and the challenge of using something that you absolutely cannot take back once you slice into the book so i i figure eh, worst case scenario i've only so far since i've done these i've only had one technical mess up and that's my own fault because i tried uh <laughs> i tried to add a little bit of um like a burn effect to it and that did not work um so oh. i had to trash that one <laughs> fire <laughs> but uh but yeah no i, I figure um because there's so many cool things that i've seen that are silhouetted <laughs> that's pretty cool and I, there's so many cool things i've seen that are silhouetted and i always think to myself that 
when, when I'm doing these, um, I can, as long as I can get the general shapes, it allows me to, one, get better at that um, for when I actually am drawing. And two, uh, once I have the um, the blade into the into the cover, then it's like, okay, let's see how this goes. And by the end of it, I'm usually pretty happy with it. Um, like the, the Biolancy one I did last week, that turned out way better than I had in my head. <laughs> so. That's cool. Yeah, that one turned out pretty awesome. Hmm. Uh, just so everybody knows that even though I don't but, have, but yeah, uh, uh, so, uh, I was gonna say, sorry, uh, just so everybody knows that even though I don't have Nathan on the screen, cause I tried doing it and then we had all those, those issues and that and he, he is still drawing. So, uh, at the end of the night, there will be one extra piece there. That is a kind of a bonus special piece that you guys will see on his site and stuff. Um, and if he posts it on the sketchy next week, I'm sure it'll be up for sale as well. Much like everyone else's fine work here this evening. And also, too, don't forget about the, uh, like we mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, we have uh, Martin Duncan's um, Kickstarter project going on. Ends in a couple days, the uh, Frankenstein's Visions. And again, there's over 35 artists on that uh, book and uh, 72 pages. There is uh, quite a few. I was looking through the, all the artists that are on there, and there's quite a few of the um, TAGS alumni in that book. So that's pretty cool. Has anyone seen the um, new, um, oh, what is it called there? Um, remake, what? or I don't know if it's a remake or a prequel of the Exorcist movie. I might watch that after the show tonight. Uh, uh, no, I want no. to though. Yeah 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 it looks interesting yeah it does look kind of neat i remember what it's called but it's there's two <laughs> two two uh uh exorcisms to be done it seems mm -hmm. based on the yeah. trailer yeah and then there's that one too with uh from a couple months ago with russell crow too as a as a priest about being the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, Pope's the Pope's Exorcist, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good movie, yeah. Yeah, that was on, like, Netflix or something. I watched it, too. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I'm glad. Uh, there's another horror movie that came out by like oh. these YouTubers. I don't remember what it's called. I haven't seen it, but I want to. Uh, crap. What, 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 hold on. What's, what one were you talking about there? About the, everyone's things are cutting out again. Um, there's a horrible- Oh, hold on one second. I think Todd, I think Todd was saying, what was it, Todd? Uh, no. I, oh, sorry, Todd. Oh, fuck. Call you Todd all the time, bro. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, I, I combine your name. <laughs> Thomas Day. It was the Todd. Thomas was talking. I just said Todd again. Fuck. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, I'm trying to do multiple things at once here, and it, obviously it, neither one is going great. <laughs> <laughs> Tom was telling us about one. Oh, I can't Pardon hear. Me. No, yeah. no, no, I'm not, I'm not talking anymore. You guys, you guys just, I'm leaving. <laughs> See ya. Thanks for the room. <laughs> okay, Paul, you can tell me what you were talking about. You said there was one on Netflix. Yeah, well, I, I was just saying that I watched the Pope's Exorcist on Netflix, but then there was this other horror movie that apparently is good called, I think it's called Talk to Me by these two YouTube dudes. Um, apparently it's good um i don't know if it's in really yeah the scariest movies ever hmm. uh, gotta see if it's still in a the theater then should be it's not even halloween yet i uh i heard there's one and i have it on my movie list as well but i haven't watched it i heard it's super scary not uh i know it's older now barbarian is that what it's called oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good one is it I enjoyed that. It's uh, weird, yeah. Hereditary is a good movie. 
Hereditary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I haven't seen that one. Uh oh. Ooh, he's talking. That's weird. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on with the sound. OBS is acting weird tonight. That I don't know what's going on. I don't really know. I'm almost ready to call it. Like, <laughs> 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 uh, you know, what? I yeah, I'm. I have things are going weird all over. I have no no idea what's going on. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Feeds go on, sounds not working or not. So I might just call this evening tonight, guys. I do appreciate you all coming on and that. Um, I'll see you. I'll talk to Stephanie and see if we can get things. I can, we can hear you, but I don't think it's working very well. So appreciate you guys all coming on. I appreciate everybody who came out to watch the show tonight. I know there's a few of you in that who are diehards in that, but it's just not working tonight. I'm not sure. Uh, if it's the system or not, but again, it's just, it's weird. So I do appreciate you guys all coming on. The artwork will be yeah. available on, uh, the, the feed and that in the next few days. Um, peace out everybody. Have a good holiday. Bye. Thanks guys. All right.